having us and inviting us to speak. Um, so I recognize a lot of faces in the room, a lot of faces I haven't ever seen before. Um, so I will hopefully get a chance to eventually meet all of you. Um, so quickly, um, my name is Erica Perez. I am the Hawaii Field Manager for Coral Reef Alliance. Um, I've been really honored to be working within the community and working with you folks and solving some of these threats that are impacting your coral reefs. Um, and today, we actually are kind of strong, strong presence today for coral, which normally uh, doesn't happen. So I will just quickly kind of introduce the coral staff to you. Um, if we run out of time for questions and answers, you can really track any, any of the coral staff down and, and they'll be able to talk with you and maybe clarify questions that you have. Um, we have Michael Webster, he's our executive director for Coral Reef Alliance, and Marissa Stein, she's in communications. Justin Vasquez, he is the program's director. And Wes Pryle, which I know uh, many of you have met already, and he is the Hawaii Field Manager over on Maui. So we're really excited to be working within your community and being here with you today. Um, so I know, hopefully, a lot of you have seen at least some <coughs> kind of information floating around your community about the Clean Water for Reefs program that we've initiated here in Kuoko. Um, today, I'm just going to go over a real quick introduction about the project, kind of how we got to the place we are today, um, what we do here in Hawaii um, outside of working within the Kuoko community, um, the goals and objectives for the Clean Water for Reefs initiative, and um, talk a little, about, a little bit about our, our collaborators and some of the science components that have really uh, made it possible for us to come in and identify um, identify the threats and hopefully potentially um, monitor ongoing uh, ongoing monitoring for the coral reef. And then we're going to really dive into why we're here today, which is introducing you all to um, the solutions that we've currently identified as being possible uh, for you, and a little bit more detail about those solutions. So I'll just go ahead and go into it. Um, what we do, who is Coral? Coral is actually a 5013C uh, nonprofit organization. Um, and our whole uh, <coughs> organization is about uniting communities to help save coral reefs. We're an international organization, so we're not just held in the United States. We have international sites around the world that we, that we uh, work with um, all, all kinds of threats from the coral reef and environmental angle. Um, so hopefully the communities that we work in can benefit not only financially, but um, help sustain their own cultural beliefs, help sustain their food sources, and just really build a nice conservation network within their own communities. Um, and then a big component that we do uh, right now and have done in the past is uh, working a lot with the tourism sector for sustainable tourism. So our work here in Hawaii has really focused, I know some of you probably have seen these signs right here around. Uh, we worked originally uh, with marine recreational providers here in Hawaii, a lot of work with the diving industry to uh, promote best practices when we're in the water and for not only the individuals that are going into the water but also the organization, or not the organization, sorry, the businesses themselves and um, educating their employees, their staff, so they can pass down that knowledge to the visitors and hopefully create a sustainable um, marine tourism sector. So we, uh, we did that through the Marine Recreational Providers West Hawaii Voluntary Standards. We work with the community to develop, to develop standards for these practices and uh, we created kind of a, a, a material and guide for these different uh, providers to use. Uh, we also did, like I said, the signs. I know that there is a sign at Wailea Bay, and I believe there's also a sign down at the Monolani. Um, and then now we're really venturing out into uh, working, you know, more closely within the Puoko community, and now have established the Clean Water for Reefs Puoko project. I'm fine with answering questions too, so. So if at the end, um, we have a little section available for some questions and answers just to let you know. So the Clean Water for Reefs um, initiative 
is not only here in Hawaii, it's an international initiative, so it's in Rotan, Honduras, it's in Maui, we're working with the folks over in Maui uh, regarding their clean water, we're on Kauai, um, speaking with those folks, and then also here on the Big Island. Uh, the whole entire initiative is solely uh, to concentrate efforts on stormwater and wastewater runoff. So it's uh, concentrating more of these land-based uh, sources of pollution and threats that, that impact the coral reef. So in September of 2014, um, we actually did announce the Clean Water for Reefs Kuoko Initiative. The reason that we did that is um, we uh, have seen uh, many different research articles. It has the Puoco community itself has, uh, or not the Puoco community, sorry, but there's state and county regulatory powers that have declared this area of South Kohala as a priority site in putting efforts in conservation. And uh, Puoco itself has shown impacts um, and initial threats for uh, residential sewage leaking and making its way into the coastal environment and into this near shore environment. So what we did as um, our team has really taken a uh, dive deep into investigating possible solutions. So our, our whole goal for the, for the project would be to help hopefully replace ineffective systems with newer and better technology to prevent that wastewater from entering the environment. So we do not do this all by ourselves by any means. There's so many components, there's so many um, different disciplines and different pieces of this project. We have lots of collaborators and partners, the University of Hawaii Hilo, the University of Hawaii Manoa, um, TNC, a lot of the folks that you see in this room today have really supported us, um, whether it be just through attending these events, through science, through their research, through time and answering questions for us. So they've been a huge part in our project and we really appreciate that. So the supporting science is really critical for, for identifying it as an actual threat. And um, with wastewater comes all these different things that I'll go into in just the next slide. Um, and we are, we're trying to prevent things like nutrients, pathogens, bacteria that, that comes with that wastewater from entering the shoreline. So what um, the UH folks have tried to do um, is show that connection, that hydrological connection. So uh, they did a dye tracer study over this summer and they did find supporting evidence that that there is a hydrological connection, and the dye that was injected into a set, into a, a cesspool or into a toilet actually made its way out to the reef in a matter of three days. And Tracy, you can correct me if I'm I'm misspeaking for any of this. Um, and then it was localized to about 10 yards of shoreline, so along the shoreline, um, and uh, it was only observed during low tide. And, and three three studies have been done today, and Steve Colbert over there has been leading that effort. Yes, thank you. And so this is just the concentration of the parts per billion of um, is it the dye that's coming up, the dye that's coming up on the reef. And so in order to detect where what kind of nutrient it is, um, you can do that by using an isotope study. And they, I have identified uh, the N15 along these section of shoreline. And so they say that high nitrogen um, isotope values in seaweeds suggest the presence of sewage pollution along the shoreline. And this is um, a, similar, a similar map, but is looking at fecal indicator bacteria and enterococcus. The top one is intercaucus, and this bottom one is uh, another. <laughs> it's, an, it's another thing. No. <laughs> okay, so with that support of actually showing that connectivity and that hydrological connection to the environment, um, we will continue partnering, continue collaborating with these folks um, for future ongoing monitoring and just really utilizing 
um, their knowledge in this area as support for our projects. So uh, what we've been doing the past year is really just diving into all these different kinds of technologies and potential options that possibly would be viable for your community and for um, the Fuoco Reef. So these are the top four, or these are the, the top solutions that we have identified as possible solutions for this community. One is treating it at an individual household level with an individual treatment unit. Um, which which would be held, which would be dealt with at a household level, and then the other is possibly an independent package plant that would be solely for Kuoko and ran and operated by a certified operator. And then the, another one, the third um, option is uh, possibly connecting into the Monolani's treatment facility, and. Uh, making it possible for the entire community to go ahead and connect into that treatment facility. And then um, at this point, what we're doing is uh, contracting with an engineer and moving on to a study. And then the component that they're going to look at, if they bring any other alternative option that we have yet to identify, that would be better for this environment and for Puoco. We definitely want to hear about that. And we don't want to just remove it off of the table. Um, because our team hasn't identified it. So what we're doing now is, is we're really going and moving to the engineering side of some of these solutions. We've taken it to the point of identifying the solutions and we really think that, that these solutions are, are good for the goal of removing this waste and removing these pathogens and bacteria and all of those things that come with it away from the environment. So the objective, um, of contracting or, or hiring an engineer to conduct a feasibility study and a pre-engineering report is to determine the best possible solution of these identified ones that would actually work for Puoco and be most viable for you folks. With the two top goals being that it's going to remove as much of that waste that's entering the shoreline and be most financially feasible for the community itself, for all of you that live here and the homeowner. The feasibility study itself is, like I said, really the engineering component that goes into kind of putting pipes in the ground, if that's the solution, the construction of it, the permitting requirements, um, understanding the ongoing maintenance of whatever option and technology we choose and identify as the best one. So they're going to be looking into all of this during the feasibility study. Once something is identified in the feasibility study, it then is going to be further investigated by a preliminary engineering report, and then that's going to go into a little bit more details about some other components of it. If at any point any of the solutions that have been identified are considered not viable for whatever reason it may be, maybe it's the timeline is 15 years before we're able to get you know, a package plant put in, or it's impossible to put a pipe, you know, down Puoco Drive, whatever, whatever the roadblock is, if at any time during the feasibility study there is a roadblock, um, we will we'll no longer continue to invest in that solution or investigate the solution. So once we have identified something from the, uh, from the feasibility study, the engineer is going to give us a preliminary engineering report and that's going to go into like the cost of things. It's going to go into the budget of the initial cost of construction, putting, um, putting that new technology in place for the homeowners. It's going to investigate um, long-term and ongoing maintenance costs for those solutions. And then it's going to determine other things like the rate structure and um, you know, permitting uh, district, district permitting requirements and kind of deal with the, the expenses of the project itself. So during all of this, what Coral will be doing is that hopefully we're going to continue to work with the community. This really is a community driven project. We realize we're not a regulatory body. We have no authority over anybody within this community to demand or require that homes make any kind of transition whatsoever. So the support and 
um, everything that we receive from the community as a whole really plays a huge part in the success of our project. And we really can't do any of it without you. So hopefully while all this is going on, um, I am available um, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have people that uh, you know need to come into your house, uh, or not into your house, I apologize, but onto your property to conduct the feasibility study, I'm going to be that li liaison. I'm going to be that one that's going to be working with the community and those other um, those other people and individuals and making sure that uh, that everybody's that everybody is kind of just okay with what's going on within their own community. Um, and then just researching a lot of uh, what we have to do on our end when it comes to getting easement rights and, and investigating a little bit more into the state and county regulations of, of working within uh, Puoco and doing construction within this area. So again, I really hope that, that you realize the door is open for any kinds of questions, whether it be now or in the future. Um, if you see concerns that are going on and, and they come up and arise throughout throughout the timeline that we'll be working with in the community, please definitely call me, email me. Um, we have a website. I should have put it on here. Um, but it is in our communications. In the back table, we have a, a flyer that kind of, this is a lot of information, and I realize how much information it is. So we have a flyer that kind of summarizes what we went over today. And then on the bottom of it, it has my email address as well as the website for the Clean Water for Reese Puoco project. And that's it. Is there any questions?